Thank uh, you, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's always been good to spend time with you over the past two days. I'm sure you've told the story a million times, but I'm sure everybody wants to know how the Impala SS came to be after the Caprice. When they came out with a new design of the Caprice, thought that they would really sell 250 to 300,000 units. And uh, so what they did was they uh, tooled three assembly plants. And as a lot of you know, uh, didn't sell quite as well as expected. One of the designers at the Design Center uh, saw the Caprice going down the road, and he followed him home. And he followed right to his driveway, in fact. And uh, he said, well, would you do this car, you know? And he said, well, I did this, and I did a few things. So what they ended up doing is they asked the guy to bring it back to the Design Center, and they looked at it. Even though they showed it to us, yeah, it was some influence. It's nothing quite like what turned out to be the production. Uh, Impala, it spurred interest that yes, we could do something with a Caprice that might help sales. The design center talked to Jim Perkins, who is that at that time was my boss, and because uh, he took over for Bob Berger, and uh, said, "Well, hey, got, we got SEMA coming up in just a few weeks. I think you can do anything." We kind of looked at it, to be honest with you, and uh, I sent it to two sources: TDM and uh, MSX. FEMA did the the body work. We worked with them on the clay to do the little spoiler on the back. We worked with them to do that little Elko in the rear window, you know, emblems and stuff like that on the side. And uh, just a few touches like that. And then we had TDM did the, uh, you know, lowered it a little bit. We got the wheels, tricked the suspension up a little bit, and uh, basically modeled it after the police car. The two companies married together. The original car was black. So are you the one that decided black only the first year? And I yeah, yeah. You wanted black forever, right? Yeah, I wanted black BBB. forever. Yeah, John, John, John did not want black. And uh, I mean, only black all three years. So we put a uh, kind of a purple clear coat over the black. And that, and so if you see the original car, you'll say, boy, get the sun. It's that kind of, you know, kind of bug. Uh, it, it looks kind of purplish, it kind of purple hue. And uh, my boss, Jim Perkins, never saw the car. Never saw it. Never saw it. And here comes SEMA. Man, we're crashing and burning. We, you told me this whole thing went down in, in two weeks, 14 yeah, days? Yeah, the whole car came together in 14 days. 14, 14 days. days. And uh, we put it on a truck and shipped it to SEMA. And we had it on the floor the first day. And holy mackerel, there's all kinds of people there. And they were, and we had press writers come up. And they said, well, what are you doing with a foreign car in your, in your, in your GM display? Not a foreign car, it's a Chevrolet. They looked at it. Can be. Chevrolet would never do anything like this. It became the talk of the whole SEMA show, quite frankly. I mean, we had people coming down, they were taking pictures of it, uh, the press would gaga over it, and, and they put out a heck of a lot of uh, you know, press releases on it. And so uh, we came back and we sort of had a few meetings on it. And, and uh, Jim says, You know, I think we're going to put this thing in production. A lot of his staff said, Jim, no way. That thing will never sell. <laughs> so, Anyway, shortly after SEMA, about a month or so later, a couple of months later, after Christmas, uh, the NEDA show, the National Dealer Convention. Well, we had the car on display. I gave a talk there, showed the dealers that. So Jim got, got up on stage and he said, I'd like to put this thing in production, but I need 2,000 orders. And I said, I got a card table over here with order forms. At the end of, the, at the end of that two-hour period, we had 2,800 orders. A lot of people couldn't believe we brought the Apollo, actual old Apollo emblems back. You know, we actually went and got all the archives, the little Apollo, got the emblem, we recreated that. We brought the the, uh, the, the name back, you know, which had been buried for years. You know, obviously an iconic car, and it kind of it kind of made four-door cars cool for the first time in the United <laughs> yeah, States. Yeah. You, know, you know, there was a couple of foreign luxury cars, you know, with the right. four-doors that cost a ridiculous amount of money. Um, I remember, you know, the New York Times article uh, that came out in July of two, 1994, and that's what sold me on the car. And uh, there were a lot of comparisons in Road and Track and right. Car and Driver, where they compared it uh, performance-wise to the BMW 5 Series, you know, the Bonneville SSEI, right. uh, you know, I think the, the Taurus SHO, and it pretty much outperformed the BMW yeah. for half the price. Yeah. So if we're going to call it a pilot, and we're going to give it a moniker of an SS, it's got to have one, it's got to have performance. If it doesn't have performance, you know, people are going to laugh at you. I know Motor Trend uh, did a kind of like what you guys do. They took it to a drag strip, they took it to a slalom course, they took it to a road course. They all come back and say, We can't believe this great, big, massive, goddamn car handled and did all this stuff. We also were aware of what the uh, people were looking at 
okay. currently, you know, as far as the subtleness and, right. you know, and, and everything. So that's kind of how it evolved, you know, really. Yeah. You, know, you know, I bought mine brand new and my wife drove it. It was our family car because we had, you know, two children and, uh, and my wife would get stopped almost daily by people asking what kind of car it was. What is that? It's, I've never yeah. seen anything like it. You know, and, that, and, I, and I always, you know, I always loved that about the car that was so unique yeah. and so, so different than everything out there. And it, but it caught people's attention. It can be cars that are unique and people are just like, well, it's just an ugly, unique car. This captured everybody's, you know, attention. People would drive by and people were like, wow, what is that? You know, and I would literally get stopped at gas stations because it didn't say, you know, Chevrolet and Palo SS and oh, boldly no. on it yet. It was very subtle. Very, and, very subtle. And it was all blacked out and it really it was a very intimidating looking car. It was really funny how quickly it went in and how it took everybody by surprise. And I think that was uh, uh, what, what shocked everybody, you know. You know, we think of the 57, the 56, and some of those here Chevrolets as classic cars, you know. Well, I truly think that the, the, this, uh, that three years of Apollo SS will probably end up being a true classic car, in, you know, in history. I really appreciate your time. We're so happy that you could come out here and you know spend a couple of days it, with us. It. And uh, it was great. Let me tell you, everybody got a thrill watching you walk around and look at the <laughs> cars and you know take pictures of you with their cars or you know have you sign their cars. So it was great. And all these people, you know, without you, then we wouldn't have uh, this yeah. whole event. You know, we well, wouldn't have these cars. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no one I can come back next. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I appreciate the, the hospitality and everything you guys have done for me. And, uh, no, I hope you it. enjoyed it. All right, John. Thanks so much. No appreciate it. Thank you.